So, yeah, so he, give, he gives a shit. Oh, one time he gave me shit really badly. <laughs> Why? What happened? Because I only go train with him once a week because I was busing for eight hours to train for two. Like, I'll get on the bus, I'll bus four hours, train for two hours, and then bus back. So I couldn't be there all the time. I, I can only be there once a week. And one time, so I didn't know who was coming and going. I had no idea. And this kid came in and he was new. But I didn't know he was new. I had no idea. And I was new. So I started hitting him pretty damn hard, right? Ed got pissed, man. Like, he was like, hey, you don't, you know, you don't hit new guys like that. He basically was saying that I was a bully without saying the word. It made me feel about this big, right? And of course, I explained to him, like, hey, it wasn't my intention to do that. I really thought he was one of your students, so I went harder. And of course, he forgave me when he realized it was an honest mistake. But he was really picky about your ethics. If you try to be a douchebag, a braggart, a piece of shit scumbag in front of him, he will school you. There was no customer service. So like, you know how in Mercer Road you get a lot of tough guys now? So you're like, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to fight to protect your family, but at the same time, I'm gonna teach the people that attacks your family. I'm gonna teach you how to defend yourself against bullying, but at the same time, I'm gonna allow bullying in my school. You're being a hypocrite, right? But Ed wasn't like that. Your character came first. He cared about who you are as a man, right? Got it. And he was everybody's best friend, man. We'll stay there till two in the morning talking to him and shit, right? Wow, that's like, rare. He really that's cared about... Rare. He's kind of like those movies you see with Daniel Sen and Mr. Miyagi yeah. kind of thing, or, or Rocky and Mickey or something. Like, this guy really gave a shit about people, right? That's why everyone loved him, right? Got it. And uh, when I was dying, he held my hand and he said, Adam, if I don't die, I promise to make you good. I cried because no one ever cared that much about me. I never got a chance. He died shortly after, right? Got it. So I only got a chance to train with him for two months, right? Got it. But if you're asking me how to find a teacher, it's like, what are you going to find a guy like that? They're born every once, once every hundred years, maybe? Yeah. Right? No, no, they're skillful. They care about you. And they don't let you get away with anything. I try teaching like this in a public class. You know, sometimes I teach, I criticize people too much. They roll their eyes, right? They're like, hey, leave me the fuck alone. I'm paying you money. Let me train. So how can you care when, when, when they shit in your face, right? Mm. Same thing when you're doing a seminar. You can't really treat them as your family and teach them hard. They'll be like, hey, leave me alone. You're giving me a hard time, right? Right. But for me, it was different. My teachers gave me a hard time because they gave a shit, and that made you better. You right. couldn't just let information in one year and out the other. They don't let you, man. <laughs> they're like, you're not, you're, they, they won't get away from you until you listen to them. And they're like, hey, look, we're not moving on until you get this, right? They made sure you got it. Yeah, well, right. I didn't get it. It was. It would take a few years to get, but then make sure you at least you verbally remember, like work on this. Got it. Uh, it's not about how much you know; it's about how much you can apply. Yeah. Right? And this guy was. Uh, yeah, I just love the guy. Well, you know? There's so. It sounds like there's so many attributes to 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 Ed. What that coach in your life during that time? If you could pick just one thing about him that you that was the biggest, like uh huh, the biggest takeaway that you got from your experience with him, what would that be? First of all, I want to say, and I, I know I keep re-emphasizing this in every interview, but I just want to make sure I'm not qualified to speak for him or to represent him in right. any way, shape, or form. I only had three classes with him, and I'm sick and tired of people representing arts after a few seminars. Right. So I'm not speaking in terms of I'm one of his students and I can represent this, no. Yeah. But just from the brief experience I had with him, he basically inspired people, at least everyone I know that knew him, to be a better person. When someone's nice to you, sometimes we brush it off, right? Because a lot of times people are mistaking niceness for weakness. And sometimes a lot of people are just nice to you because they want something. So they're not really nice, they're just, they're polite because it's, they're weak. But when someone can kick the shit out of you without effort, and they care about you, that's different. That is different than just someone being nice and polite. That moves you, right? That inspires you. He did that for a lot of people. There was no doubt in your mind when you're sticking with him that he can demolish you. But yet, he lets you hit him. He doesn't care. He's trying to make you better. That is love, right? So he inspires that other people to not be a bully, to not be a braggart, to not take advantage of people, to not beat people up, to not show off. Everything we see in social media, he was the opposite of. Everything in the modern culture, he was the opposite of. He's like, be kind, but be strong at the same time. So he inspired that. That's huge. As a martial artist, well, I can't speak for that either, but as a coach, 
I gave you some example of not wasting yeah. motion, hitting hard, sticking. Yeah. So being very precise, he made a big difference for that. But I didn't spend enough time with him to be able to go in depth like a lot of his students, right? Yeah. yeah. But Ed was a pretty cool guy because he was a professional boxer. He had a lot of street fights. He was really good. And then later on, he got beat by Bruce, and then he started learning Kung Fu, and later he learned from Jesse and did more Kung Fu, right? But he never wanted to be a teacher. One night he was smoking. He, has qu he had quit fighting and training by then, and he dropped his cigarette, and his apartment went on fire. That's not good. <laughs> Jesse kicked the door open and dragged him out and saved him. In the ambulance, Ed died for two minutes. When they brought him back, Ed's like, I found my calling. I think I should be helping people instead of drinking all the time. You know, That's teach, teach me wow. Kung Fu. Wow. And then I'm going to use it to teach kids. So he was really into teaching to help other kids, right? From that experience. Yeah. Jeez, that's huge. So, but before that, he was just a fighter. And yeah. then he's like, what's the point of being a great fighter if I can't help people? Yeah. So that was uh, Ed's thing, right? So. Is that where you got your ability to, to um, adjust your approach with us? And, and I mean in the context that you know, in a room full of five, six, seven, eight guys, I notice that whenever you're teaching us, the way that you'll teach me is adjusted based on who I am. And then if you're in front of somebody like Scott, you have an ability to adjust and somebody else um, like Jackie and so on. Where did that come from? And what's the model behind that? Because that's unique. I haven't had that before where someone could look at me and be like, okay, well you, you, you could technically do this much better than maybe trying to do this. So maybe you should try doing this. It's so new to me. Like where did it come from and, and how do you format that? When I first learned, I was like everyone else. I just want to copy the best guy I can find, right? Right. Just blindly. But we have different bodies, different mindset, different personality. There's no way that everyone can do the same thing. You have to do what works for you. You got to do what's catered to your own body and mind, right? That concept was introduced to me to, like, to millions and millions of people by Bruce Lee and his writings, right? But just because I read something and understand it intellectually doesn't mean I can apply it. So the concept was in my head, but I couldn't do it until I met Jesse, right? And, I, mm -hmm. and talking to him and watching him teach and him teaching me, again, very briefly, I digested that idea, right? Got it. But now you look at, nowadays, a lot of JQD guys are trying to copy Bruce, but you don't have his mind, you don't have his body. Why don't you just do what's suited for your body and your mind, and that will actually work a lot better for you, right? And Jesse demonstrated that when he was teaching, right? Got it, got yeah. it. So when you look at it, uh, one of your students now, like what, what like, say, well, just because we're here, like, use me for an example. Like when you see me move, what do you look on me that makes you say, okay, Alan can probably do this probably better than if he tried it like this. Like if I was to try to remodel that for my own mind so I can get better at selecting how I want to maximize my movement with minimal effort, which is part of the yeah, concept I like, get from you. Kind of you how would I do that? It's like um, you're a big dude. You are. You're a big dude. Ex-fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're a big, strong dude. And um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm an old dude. Okay. So, like, oh, you don't have to. We don't got to do anything intense. I'm just... So you're sticking, right? You got your elbow in, and that's great, right? But you're a big dude. For you to get your elbow in, you got big pecs. It's going to be difficult, right? So for you to keep on trying, you can try, but why don't you just... You're such a big guy. If I get my elbow out, Scott hits me, right? Let me see. He just slap me in the chest, right? Bam. Avoid the mic. Oh, with the mic. <laughs> okay. So he slams easy. He can easily get me, right? So they say, keep your elbow in. So if you hit me now, it's a lot dif difficult because my elbow's in, right? So now you hit. It's harder. But what if you're big? If I get my elbow out, in theory, I'm supposed to get hit. But now I'm going to have my elbow out. I still won't get hit. You hit. My elbow is all the way out. Go ahead, hit. It wouldn't matter if my elbow's out or in. You just make different type of adjustment, right? And how did you make that adjustment in the moment? It's like what, what when the bone's here, this is stopping him from coming in. If my bone's out, there's empty space, so it's easy for him to get in. Right. But I can still be open and spiral in this way, right? Oh. So now if he hits, he still he can't get in. That's like each one, right? Got it. So you make adjustment based on who you are, right? Yeah. Or like I just busted my knee, yeah. so I can't really walk, right? So I bought a cane recently. So the first thing I did was start training with it. So if I get someday older or I lost a leg, I'm going to invent a cane system, right? So you adjust based on your body, but you can't be like, oh, I broke my leg. 
But I'm still going to be like a guy with two legs. But that's kind of stupid. You adjust based on your body type, right? All right. So, yeah. Okay. That's just one example. Anything you do because of your body and your personality, right? Mm -hmm. You also have a tendency to hold back a lot because you're afraid to hurt people because you're incapable of hurting people. So, if you keep on holding back, you're not going to excel. If you don't hold back, you'll hurt people. Nobody wants to train with you. So, you got to have your cake and eat it too. you got to learn to not hold back and do it safely. So you got to develop control. Mm 